You know how it's sometimes said that truth is stranger than fiction? Or you just can't make some things up? Well, the production methods for the artificial sweetener known as aspartame is just one of these things. I, I just couldn't believe the information that I came across recently. Well, I mean, we know from the beginning, from the invention of aspartame, which was pushed into legality by the um, chemical manufacturing company Monsanto, um, it, they they had a lot of controversy from the start, you know. People are saying it could cause brain tumors. It's untested. Uh, it's unhealthy. It's unnatural. You know, the bottom line is we really don't know the long-term side effects of this. But because of all this flack recently, they've decided to change the name from um, aspartame to amino sweet, and they call it that because it's made from amino amino acids and they actually say that it's a natural sweetener now that's what they're trying to push on us they're saying it's natural because the two amino acids that it's made from occur naturally separately when they put them together and combine them then it's perfectly natural and safe I for one don't buy that you can look into yourself I'm sure most of you already have you you know you know a pretty good background on it I'll give I'll give a little just a little snip of a background right here before I get into the good part to reassess it, and this time around, FDA should do it right. Aspartame was discovered in the mid-60s at G.D. Searle, the Chicago Drug Company. Searle was bought by Monsanto and then was spun off to form the NutraSweet Kelco Company. The FDA originally approved aspartame back in 1974, but FDA investigators soon found serious problems in some of the studies that Searle had submitted to the FDA, and so a task force was organized to investigate many of Searle's tests. There were some very serious deficiencies in the conduct of some of those experiments. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a subject for another day. But let's look at how this this sweetener is actually produced. I couldn't believe this. Now, this is an article on independent.co.uk, 1999. This is one of Britain's leading newspapers. The article is entitled "World's Top Sweeten Sweetener Is Made with Genetically Modified Bacteria." says, as the G8 summit of rich country leaders decided last night to launch an inquiry into the safety of genetically modified food, an investigation by the Independent on Sunday revealed that Monsanto, the pioneering GM food giant which makes aspartame, often uses genetically engineered bacteria to produce a sweetener at its U.S. production plants. We have two strains of bacteria. One is traditionally modified and one is genetically modified, said the Monsanto source. It's got a modified enzyme. It has one amino acid different. The use of gen genetic engineering to make aspartame has stayed secret now until, um, until now because there is no modified DNA in the finished product. Monsanto insists that it's completely safe. Monsanto's spokeswoman confirmed that aspartame for the U.S. market is made using genetic engineering, but sweetener supplied to British, to British food producers is not. However, consumer groups say that it's likely that some low-calorie products containing genetically engineered aspartame have been imported into Britain. Increasingly, chemical companies are using genetically engineered bacteria in their manufacturing products processes without telling the public. Okay, so I decided to see what this process really entailed. So I looked up a patent and I found out that they're actually using genetically modified E. coli, which is toxic. So they're creating this toxic sludge of genetically modified E. coli with one enzyme different, feeding it some goop, and then the E. coli produces as an excrement. It literally poops out the aspartame uh, which they um, extract and use that for the sweetener. So aspartame, this artificial sweetener, is actually made by genetically modified E. coli poop. That's what it is. And that's the cheapest way to make it. So I found this patent. Uh, you can look it up. It's EP0036258. That's the patent number. Uh, the patent's actually from 1981. So um, you know, aspartame became legal in 1980. It, it was produced using normal chemical means by Monsanto. That's what they do. They're a chemical company. Um, and then, you know, as soon as it got made legal, they just produced these cheaper ways to make it. And this is the cheapest way. So I'll read this. The artificial sweetener aspartame, a dipeptide with the formula asp me, is produced using a cloned microorganism. A DNA which codes for a large stable peptide comprised of repeating amino acid sequence. 
is inserted into the cloning vehicle, which is in turn produced into a suitable horse, host microorganism. The host microorganism is cultured, and the large peptide containing the repeating sequence is harvested therefrom. The free carbonoxyl group of the large peptide is benzylated and then hydrolyzed for to, to benzyl from um, asp phi dipeptides. The dipeptide is ethylated and then debenzylated to form aspartame. Sounds real natural to me, guys. But I came across, you know, like I said, they they decided to change their name. They're not even calling it aspartame anymore. They just think we're stupid. They're calling it amino sweet and natural sweetener. But, you know, I was thinking about this, and it just didn't sit right to me, you know. This sweetener that they put in soda pop is produced by some bacteria's poop. And I was thinking, 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 and then something clicked in my head. I've seen this before. I was watching an episode of Futurama, and this just hit too close to home. Watch this clip. The secret ingredient, all right. And as you guys can remember, this was the episode where he won the golden ticket like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and they got the free trip out to the Slurm Factory, which is his favorite drink. And they snuck into the secret room and found out the secret ingredient it was actually Slug's poop. So, I'm thinking, you know, how does he know all this? Well, it, it's pretty obvious that Matt Groening is a 33rd degree Freemason. You know, just look at his image it's a screenshot from one of the new episodes it was last year um, season 20 episode 13 I believe <laughs> I mean that, that that's kind of obvious but look at these some of these other clips from Simpsons episodes over the years this one's 1993 they're all covered with filthy germs aren't they spitties why what do you mean sir Pimps and the Chuds. Oh, I'd love to see New York. We could all go at the bus company's special super sitter fair. Five bucks. This one's on me. Great. That was 1997, predicting 9/11. And he threw it in there. You know, he had this. He had this knowledge. He full all kinds of knowledge. Three nations rule the world. Predicting 9/11. Obviously, he has he has knowledge of Freemasonry when he made that web episode called the Stone Cutters. Look that one up, Stone Cutters on YouTube. And that actually Latin it says something like "Be stupid, sit down, take orders." Check out the Barbie doll. Look at her head. You see, things like this in no accident. Matt Groening is a 33rd degree Freemason illuminated member. Um, he's he's pulled knowledge in advance and uses his knowledge that he has, like the, you know, aspartame being made from genetically modified bacteria poop. He uses that to either make fun of the public or to indoctrinate the public. And the new Simpsons movie was full of these signals. Just look for. Simpsons movie Illuminati. You'll find a whole myriad of things you couldn't possibly imagine.